Well, Tanja Lee, how are you? I am amazing. Good for <laughs> you. How about that? You don't hear that in the middle of Corona Loco, as you Corona. call it very often. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so obviously you and I have had a courageous conversation before, but I wanted to revisit it because I know there's been a lot of change for you in recent times. Yes. Um, and so if we go back, uh, 2019 was the best of years and the worst of years, I think, potentially for you. 100%. Yes, yes. And I think what you're referring to is the best of years in my business in the sense that, you know, I was recognised for my efforts uh, yeah. with winning four awards, uh, three with REB and then one with the um, uh, Property Magazine. Yeah. So that was amazing. Yet... And I remember seeing you on the night of one of the awards. Uh, the REB night, yeah. Yeah, I, um, I wasn't myself. And I wasn't myself because the flip side of that, you know, great success and acknowledgement in my business was I was actually consciously completing uh, a 20-year marriage. So, you know, to be honest with you, the first REB awards, you know, it, for the whole day, I was on the precipice of bawling my eyes out. I was, we're getting hair and makeup done with Amanda Jane Gould, our, our friend. And, yeah. and I just wanted, I just wanted to bawl. Like I didn't, I didn't feel like frocking up and trying to be fabulous and I didn't expect to win anything. And then when I got, <laughs> then when I won, I think that was um, industry thought leader and wellness advocate for the women in real estate awards. Thanks to REB. I, and then I had to make not one but two speeches. Yep. I had to really dig deep to find something to say that would be authentic and land and not be, you know, you know, artificial. So, yeah, it, what, 2019 was the, the most uh, rewarding, not rewarding because I won awards, but it was a lovely acknowledgement. But then, yeah, definitely tricky with completing a 20-year marriage with someone that, you know, you thought was going to be happy ever after and two dogs later yeah that's um yeah that's really tough really yeah. tough that's a long time it's a long time and so you have always been really focused on leadership um in particular in the real estate space you were very clear when you got into this section of your business that's what you wanted to do but when we spoke um in recent weeks you've had a bit of a change yes. in that yeah so talk us through what's going on yeah you know and something so thanks for the opportunity again to share a, a yeah. story about being courageous because something i haven't really shared in the almost six years i was in real estate and property was i literally so i'm going to get a little more uh, vulnerable with you and all of you listening and watching before I entered real estate I literally uh, I had just completed three and a half years of entrepreneurial leadership training I had my own business at the time as a performance coach didn't have a niche. however I was looking for a way that I could really add value and I literally Leanne meditated for 10 months get this I I stopped all alcohol, all sugar, all carbs, and just was as clear and clean as possible and did a beautiful meditation by Marianne Williamson. And she's the one that wrote, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. The famous quote that Nelson Mandela said that Marianne Williamson actually wrote. And I did her morning prayer every morning for 10 months. And at the end of the kind of morning prayer or, or the, the meditation, you literally, I, like the prayer is literally asking, like, use me, use me so I may know that I'm being used by you. That is like, use me for the greater good. Use me so I know I'm doing good on the planet. And I swear to you, I was standing under, oh, shivers. I was standing under the skylight in my kitchen and this voice just came down and said, when I say voice, it's not like heart tanger this <laughs> here, right? However, it's not a religious thing. It's like I'm a very spiritual person. I believe in a, you know, that we are part of something greater. I believe we're all clair, clairvoyant, clairsentient, clairaudient, clear seeing, feeling, and hearing. Yeah. And I just got this very clear message, Tanja, call Stockdale and Lego. I'm like, what? I left it. To, to, for two weeks, call Stockton and Lego, it said again, two weeks later in the cast that I said, I didn't know what it was about. 
but I was told what to do and where to go. And at the time I was also looking to list, and we were list, uh, listing and selling our family home. And literally it's like spirit told me to do it, said niche everything you can into real estate and property. There's a way that you can add value and that's different to what else is being offered. And when I entered the industry, I spent four and a half months just deep diving into research and finding out where are the gaps. There's plenty of amazing coaches. You, you, yeah. you work with all of them, coaches, trainers and I've never listed and sold a house in my life so I couldn't come from that space but I have 30 years experience in the corporate private retail government sector leading teams of four to four hundred and and running like growing businesses by 200 percent in some cases and big businesses like 86 million dollar businesses so I knew I knew my stuff Mm. I just didn't know, how, you know, where it would fit. And then you yeah, found, found the niche and I, I saw there was a gap in leadership, which, which I know you agreed with. And, yeah. and then I just, you know, I just was of service to leadership and mindset coaching for a good five and a half years and literally went from average consumer to industry influencer within the first two years. And then all these awards last year. And l l the thing is, it's the, the same thing just happened like on, on the morning of the 8th of April, it was a pink supermoon. And I, <laughs> of, course I was, of course it was. You know, he's the one we prepared earlier. And the pink supermoon just means the moon is 10% closer to the earth than normal. And, uh, and so what does that mean? I'm not really into, you know, astrology and all of that stuff. That's not my jam. But I, I just found it, it you know, it, it was illuminating stuff in me uh, to a higher degree. I woke up. Same thing. The voice just said, you need to go and get your journal that you were where you were in Thailand with Kaya and uh, you need to read the first three pages. Now, I had forgotten that when Kaya and I went to Thailand, we were at this ethical elephant sanctuary. I'd meditate every morning. I had done my morning meditation. It was beautiful outside. And as soon as I finished this big download was coming about what I was going to do this year, the shifts and changes I would make. And I had completely forgotten about it because Kaya got sick. Well, we can talk about yeah. that. And, and then Corona Loco. And here we are four months later, but it was like, read the first three pages. I read, it was like, Oh yeah, that's right. And then it said, now go and pull a card. Okay, great. Now go and read this. And I literally felt like I was a puppet and someone was going, do this, do that. And they, they, the voices literally said, I sound crazy, the voices, but you a little bit, yeah. it's the hunch, <laughs> no, just a little bit, but you know, here's the thing we have all of us that inner voice, that gut, which is to give up thinking. We all get whispers from our higher self to have us do or not do something. And we all know what it's like when you don't follow that voice, things tend to not go so well. Yeah. So uh, whether it was my higher self or divine intervention, it doesn't really matter. I could feel the truth in it. And, they, and it was lit, the direction literally was, you need to do it immediately. This wasn't a reaction to Corona Loco, like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, all my speaking and training gigs have postponed, clients are cancelling. No, that hasn't happened. Well, speaking and training has, has postponed, but my clients are still the same and still will be. It was more, we need you in a different realm now. We need you to do different work and to a wider audience than real estate and property. And I just tend to do what I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> no matter who tells you to do it. Well, that's a... <laughs> yeah, you know, it is about listening to that, that little voice. In, yeah. And I truly believe our higher self knows what we want. And I think this gets in the way. And it's our fear and our ego that gets in the way of being courageous. And, and trusting your gut and going for it. Because I wasn't yes. unhappy. In no, that's the thing, right? You weren't unhappy and you had a successful um, business and, and coaching practice in that space. So. Yeah. so it's not like there was anything wrong and I pivoted, the, the, the word everyone's using, to, to react. or was, It was like, no, it was my intuition just said, it's time for a shift. Like, and it was immediate. It wasn't like, okay, in the next year, you're going to slowly, it was like, no, you need to really you still do what you're doing, but just, just do it in a more, you know, embodied, full self-expression of myself. Cause you know, as I said recently, I do feel like I've been trying to squash myself on my little fingernail just because there's so much more to me than just real estate and property. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of the work I've done there, but I, I feel like there's, 
um, you know, a, a different calling now. And so what is that calling? What's the direction going to be? So same flavor in the sense that, you know, I just wake up every day to literally support and empower people to fulfill their potential now like now, because there's so much we can do to fulfill our potential and achieve our dreams and be effective and increase our influence and impact now, mm -hmm. despite what's going on. So it's still the same. And I'm just introducing parts of myself that have been dormant for the last six years, which I used to do a lot more of, which is using the unleashing your intuitive intelligence. So tapping into that intuitive voice and listening beyond rational mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I do a lot of energetic healing and clearing. This is literally clearing all the funk in the trunk and the past where things have happened and the stories and negative beliefs we tell ourselves that literally store themselves in our body. And and so many people, they know what to do. We know how to be fit. We know how to be successful. We know how to be wealthy, but we sabotage ourselves. And so a lot of what I do is about looking at, taking a look under the hood going, why are you sabotaging yourself? Why are you procrastinating? And where in your body are you storing all this old crap that is holding you back? And we literally using Reiki and different healing techniques we eliminate that energy from the body and we're even doing it online and I've been doing that for years. And then, so it's about healing and clearing the past, getting clear about your passion and purpose now, and then absolutely fuel injecting your ability to become masterful at manifesting because most people yeah, aren't, are holding on to the past, aren't clear about what they want, or if they are, they're not courageous enough to take a risk and bloody go for it. Mm. And there's ways that we can manifest beyond. I just don't subscribe, Leanne, to the whole hustle, hustle, grind, force, energy. Yeah, it actually doesn't have to be like that. You can you can be really clear and in flow, and ideas just land in your lap, and then you can action them. Like this. There's so many people in specifically in the real estate space, but I guess in any space that, um, you know, for, for us in real estate, it's not complicated, right? We know what we have to do. We have to connect with people. Um, yes. Yet there are so many um, real estate salespeople that don't actually do what they need to do. That's right. And they don't, they know what to do. They go to all the trainings, Eric, listen to great people like yourself we know what to do but i'm fascinated with what what has some people just get the information and apply it yeah. people just over consume information and do nothing with it and there's really five reasons why we don't fulfill our potential and and when you get really clear and accountable on what those five handbrakes to your success are the five ways that our subconscious sabotages ourselves well then you've got no excuses you really just got yourself to deal with. And most of us are scared. We're just scared of stuffing up. We're scared of being judged. We're scared to take a risk. But, you know, I just I love to illuminate what those five things are. So people what go, are they? Oh, yeah. Oh, you want to know? Yeah, of course I do. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yeah. I learned back 2005 and I swear when I learned this, it was just like, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it just gives me a greater sense of awareness. So the consider we have, we have a soul or our creator, right? There's who we are as a creative being and the agenda of, of our creator is to go and manifest what we love. And if that is to be an astronaut, to make yo-yos, to be an amazing stay at home mom, to open up a real estate office, whatever it is, that's your truth. That's, that's why we came here. There's a blueprint in our heart, go and create it. Then there is our ego, as I like to say, she go for the women and he go for the guys. Mm -hmm. And this orientation, most of us hang out here unconsciously 98% of the time. The, the ego, you know, you hear people say, oh, he's got such a big ego, she's got such a big ego. Yep. Ego is just literally the wounded child that either didn't get love and acknowledgement or, or sorry, love and nurturing from the mother or the feminine and acknowledgement and praise from the masculine. So in life, things happen. And what we do as kids and even now as adults, we don't just deal with what happens. We make the happening mean something. So for mm -hmm. example, when I'll get to those five things really quickly, 
in my life, when I was I'm an only child, when I was six, my parents, to illustrate this, my parents both worked two jobs. Their game was earn as much money to, you know, do up the house, to sell the house, to get more money, to get a better house and evolve, right, and, mm -hmm. and build wealth. Not that we, we were never a fully wealthy um, family, but we, we had a beautiful house over our head and mum and dad worked really hard. However, when I was six, mum and dad gave me a house key and said, Tanja, we're not going to be home sometimes because we're going to be at work. So you're going to need to get yourself to school and get yourself home from school with a key, right? So that's what happened. But yeah. I made it mean I'm alone for the rest of my life and I'm not good enough because if I was good enough, mum and dad would be home with like a little tea party and want to play with me and ask me how my day was. And and so like I'm, I'm on my own now. And I that was when I made that decision as a six year old, Leanne, I didn't file that in the past with when they gave me the key. I filed that in the future and then life became about being right about I'm alone for the rest of my life and I'm not good enough. So I then unconsciously manifested situations to be right about that. And that is the first of the five benefits of the ego. We have to be right about our limiting beliefs about ourselves, others in the world. So mm -hmm. you want to know what's holding you back? Number one, all the decisions we've made, don't trust men, don't trust women, don't speak out in public, you know, because you were a kid and you did at school and the kids and the teacher laughed at you. Don't put your heart out fully. You know, all of the things, we've all got a bunch of keys that hold us back. So that's the first thing. We have to know there's our soul, there's our ego. Our ego, if our soul just wants to go create what it loves, our ego's agenda is to seek validation. Because if mm -hmm. we don't feel like we're good enough, we have to overcompensate. And how do we do that? We people please, we overpromise, we under deliver, we say yes when we truly mean no. We get a lot of qualifications because we don't feel like that degree or all of those degrees is enough. And it's a never ending vicious circle. Mm -hmm. so, and most of us are here most of the time, it's very stressful. And what keeps us there are these five ingredients of the saboteur, which is number one, as I said, we are addicted to being right about our crappy beliefs about ourselves, others, and the world. Mm -hmm. Number two, we avoid responsibility. We literally avoid responsibility for doing the things that we know we need to do. And if we take this a little bit higher, I believe we're avoiding the responsibility of living our greatest potential out loud, like fulfilling the reason why we're actually here. And we can blame others for what he or she or whatever, why we're not. The third one, and this is the most common one out of all the surveys and research and sessions I've done over 25 years, this is the common one. The third ingredient for our inner saboteur is staying uh, safe and comfortable. Mm. We hang out in familiar territory. Yeah. We don't like it there. We don't like that abusive relationship. We don't like that unfulfilling job. We don't like those extra 10 kilos on our body. We don't like that addictive behavior, but we know it. And, you know, some people literally pitch a tent and dig a hole and light a fire and set up camp and invite their friends and kumbaya and stay there. Mm -hmm. And we're scared to take a risk and we're scared to be seen. That's the most common one. Yeah. The fourth one is we get to be a victim. Now, what I mean by that, the definition of victim means that I relate to myself like I'm at the mercy of external circumstances. I don't have the power to change my situation or my, my uh, experience. And that is like pulling the plug of your personal power where you will constantly in, be in a state of surviving mm -hmm. and just existing. And I believe, Leanne, we didn't come here just to exist and survive. We came here to thrive and create. And then the final piece is, why do we want to be right about our crappy beliefs? Why do we avoid responsibility and don't show up in our greatest version of ourselves? Why do we stay safe and comfortable and hang out in familiar territory we don't dig? And why are we a victim like relate like we don't have the power because unconsciously we all believe we're not good enough. So we, cre we seek significance. In other words, we can become drama kings and drama queens and unconsciously create a whole lot of noise, a whole lot of chaos, a whole lot of noise as uh, well to feel like our life means something. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So 
the good news is we're a creator, we're, we're creating, but we're creating stuff we don't want. So if you're in a relationship that's not serving you, or you seem you keep attracting the same guy, or you're only hitting certain thresholds of your finances, and you're facing and attracting dramatic people and a lot of drama, there is something unconsciously in you that is attracting that to you. Mm -hmm. Those five things, when we get straight about that and go, ooh, which one is my Achilles heel? And you take responsibility for it. That's when you can really shift. So all of this work that I've been doing over the years, like what am I doing now? Same thing I've already always done, but just in a more holistic, unneeded mm -hmm. way because I feel like we are miracles on earth and we just don't relate like we are. And the power is absolutely in our hands. And like you're seeing in your role as managing director and the pre and president of REI NSW, <laughs> there's a lot that you can't control, that we yeah. can't control. But man, there's a lot we can do. And you're great at encouraging your team at Lang and Simmons to look at what can we do, guys? Like, how can we be of service? How can we innovate? And when we shift from being the victim to the creator, when we take responsibility for the funk in our trunk and deconstruct what happened and what we made it mean and start getting more interested in what now and just keep mm. showing up and doing the work, whew, that's where stuff really starts to shift. Well, that's a lot. I know. <laughs> you asked. <laughs> I did ask. Yeah, that's all really interesting. Um, and so are you going to do just private coaching on this or are you going to do public events or how are you going to actually get this message out? So the first thing is we've got a new podcast called Tea with Tanja Lee, which is live on Facebook and Instagram, 8 a.m. every Monday and Friday. Yeah. I am writing uh, the first online program called The Heart of Conscious Creating, where you can yep. actually look at how do you complete the past? How do you connect with your passion and purpose? And how do you become masterful at manifesting? Yep. So that'll be the first online gig. And then... Uh, of course, one-on-one -on -one sessions, uh, which will be released soon. So that's just where you can do some coaching with me or we can shift some stuff energetically and tap into what do you love and what's, what do you need to practice or what are the five things that are really sabotaging your success that you can release. And then uh, also, yeah, but when Corona Loco comes down, then uh, looking at doing live events and then doing really cool retreats uh, around the world in amazing locations. So I've, the, I've had a few people ask me if we can do one in Egypt where we're l learning some of the, uh, you know, the ancient alchemic mysteries and practices and having a beautiful experience. So that wow. And a few yeah. other pieces on the side. So I've always wanted to go to Egypt, just putting it out there. It's magic. Well, Maria Fintakakis, she's she's put her hand up. It's a few other real estate peeps actually who have said, you know, and I, there's, I've got some amazing contacts there where we'll get to do stuff that the general public don't get to do. And that's that's the magic of, you know, of coming from a place where you can do things that you never dreamed of, but you can't do it when you're stuck in your, when you're victim. Oh. So look out for potentially a retreat coming up, you know, when we can. Yes. Like Bali probably will be the first one, but then Egypt for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Um, I could talk to you all afternoon about this because <laughs> I just have so many questions, but I won't do that to you because I know you've got other things you need to do. Um, I do quickly, though, just want to, you, you did reference that you were in Thailand with Kaya. How is she now? Because she got really sick, right? Yeah, yeah, she was hospitalised. So we were meant to have a 15-day tropical adventure in Thailand to reset and she was going to start VCE. Uh, day three, she got super sick and was hospitalised. Uh, this was all when coronavirus was, was kind of breaking out of Wuhan. Uh, they diagnosed her with pneumonia and then said that she had tuberculosis. She had every single symptom of coronavirus. The blood test we got nine weeks later confirmed she didn't have TB. I 100%, and I know you and I have talked about this, yeah. thing, had coronavirus. Thank God the TB medication actually helped her. But, yeah, she's still not well. She's still quite weak. She hasn't gone back to school. Uh, you know, she's not doing VCE. Uh, she's likely mm. to be doing VCAL. We're still working that out because she's still got quite a few symptoms that are hanging around, but she's alive. And uh, it looked it, at, at a couple of points there, especially on the flight home when she couldn't breathe and needed her on oxygen, she came close to not being here. So mm. 
self-isolation is critical because I wouldn't want anyone to experience what I saw Kaya go through. And, and, yeah. you know, thankfully I was with her the whole time. I didn't get anything. So it's, it is really important that we, we self-isolate, but use this time of self-isolation for transformation and level up during lockdown. Oh, I love that. Level up during lockdown. That's yeah, probably a good way to finish off our conversation. I uh, love it. Always love catching up with you, my beautiful friend. So thank you so much for um, making the time. My pleasure. And if anyone out there is listening to this and you really know you need to take a courageous step forward, then just reach out. Like, honestly, my Instagram is at the um, at handle, obviously, the Tangeli. And if I can be a raft or a light, I'm, I'm here for all of you. Much, much love. And thank you, Leanne, for all that you do. You're such a lighthouse leader. Uh, and just, you know, you're unstoppable. It's awesome. Oh, thank you very much. Catch you soon. Bye.